Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. This week, we're catching up with Scott to take a tour of his self-built box truck, which he uses so that he can live as close as possible to one of California's most popular beaches. And this box truck was built to be completely off-grid and features a unique in-floor storage system, a huge bathroom, and a spare bed for guests. But before we jump right in and take a tour, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new episode. So grab your sunnies and sunscreen because surf's up. I'm Scott, we're in Orange County, California, and this is my beach house box truck. I've owned RVs and boats my whole life, and it was very easy to transition into a smaller RV, especially when I retired. The priority of building this was spot I've been surfing at for the last 50 years lowered their length limit to 25 foot and I was at 36 foot so I could no longer go there. So I designed this and wouldn't have really built it but then COVID came along and I was stuck at home bored so I bought a truck from a friend and got busy. It's a 2008 GMC slash Isuzu box truck. The reason I specifically went with the box truck was I wanted a commercial chassis that could handle a lot of weight because I'm fully self-contained and I wanted to be totally separate, the cab from the living quarters. It has a Morgan 18 foot box on it, which is eight foot tall. So the build itself inside is 16 foot by seven and a half foot wide and it's about seven foot tall. The floor has been raised so I have storage underneath the floor as well. All in, including the truck and my modifications, came to just about $65,000. The unique part is this is an all-electric vehicle. It has six lithium batteries, 1,600 watts of solar on the roof. It's never been plugged into an outlet. It's not hooked to the motor. This has been running for almost three years on solar alone. It has a fridge, a separate freezer, two air conditioners, a washing machine, a microwave, a water heater. It's got everything and a 50-inch television as well. And it's, it's never been out of power yet. This is my 18-foot movie screen. I have two guitar speakers, a projector, and a mixing board. And very commonly, we do movies out here with a very bright projector at nighttime. This is my main diesel tank. I wanted to carry more fuel, so I put this box here and I had this made. And that also has a fitting for a diesel heater if I wanted to put one inside. It also carries two spare diesel tanks, two red tanks for gas, and then my wetsuit storage. And I do have a generator that fits in there, but I've never once used it. Walking forward, I have the waste tank, which goes down to here. And Basically, every month, I put this hose in a, in a pump out station. I pull this and in less than three minutes, it's done. I put it back and I put it up and I'm out of here. That's why I elected to go with a regular holding tank rather than a, some type of mulching toilet or composting toilet. I didn't want to mess with it. Around the back, I have storage drawers all through the back. This is my umbrella setup. It's not attached to the ground. That goes outside of one of the receivers and all this stores under the floor there. This comes down. This goes down. This is on magnets. Goes in the back of the chair. This pulls out. Chair goes up there. This ladder sits right into this cavity here. And underneath here is my surfboard storage. Right now I have an 11 foot surfboard in here. And I also have racks on either side that will hold surfboards. And this is a 2000 pound hydraulic lift 
So I have a motorcycle rack that this goes down to the floor, put my, my motorcycle on and it lifts it up. And when I go to leave, I have to pull it up like this. And then I simply undo the two latches, roll down the back, latch them in and I'm, and I'm off. This is my living room. This is my 50 inch television. This is the dining room table and also extended counter space. It flips up. The reason I have a, an extendable table is I needed a little bit more counter space. And also when I have my kids or grandchild with me, they need a place to eat. This is my hanging clothes. This was gonna be firewood, but it is now my hat storage and my secondary air conditioning unit. And then because I'm parked at the beach most of the time, and this is my view, the windows are made to fold up like that. and that's why the ropes are always up there. And then the door, unlike most motor homes, I have the door that swings in so I get a nice breeze through here. I did this area here for convenience and I just wanted it to look nice. It is backlit, guitar, binoculars, and my grandson's Fillmore. And above that is my electrical control panel. And I have a Victron color controller and then the Blue Sea 12 volt and 120 volt. And of course, sunglass storage. And then this opens up and there's all the electronics for the whole system. I have a seven foot L-shaped couch on this side, I have another counter. That's my primary air conditioner They're right there, the up vent. This couch lifts up electrically and underneath is the whole electrical system. Six battle band, four in batteries, 3000 watt inverter and twin charge controllers. And that's a washing machine. This is my kitchen area, starting with uh, chair storage for the table, um, butcher block top. In keeping with the theme of all electric, I went with a a good size induction cooktop that works really well. And then I have a deep stainless steel sink with um, running hot and cold water. And there's a, a fan that will suck everything out and that goes through the floor. Real tile, thermometer for my fridge is at 38, my freezer's at eight. Isotherm refrigerator. This is all, this whole area is thermostatically controlled right here. Then I have stainless steel drawers. My limited overhead storage, it's all pretty much designed for, for my living. Toaster, all kinds of stuff in here. Um, shaving kit, cleaners, all that stuff. Shop towels, paper towels. This is my trash area. Two trash cans that go deep into the floor. One is burnable trash and one is non-burnable trash because when we're out around a campfire, you generally burn your paper at nighttime. Then um, under here, I have a separate freezer that's fully stocked, been running for three years now. And then to continue with the kitchen, instead of having overhead cabinets everywhere, the whole floor has been raised. And I, this is my pantry. I have nine storage bins that lift out and then slide over to each side for the stuff I don't use as often. And I also have um, areas for my AC, DC and plumbing. The reason I went with underfloor storage throughout this whole unit is I didn't want overhead storage. Too many vehicles I see have cabinets going along both sides and it sort of gives you that I'm in an airplane feel that seems very congested. So I went with underground storage with the stuff that I don't use as often. This is my sleeping area. It also does a couple other things. This is the air conditioning intake, my microwave. Then down here, the floor rises up to get more storage under here. This is my hamper and shoe storage. This is very deceiving, but it goes down a lot deeper. That's my hanging locker. The bed itself is a small double. I call it a large single. Um, to make it larger, it does slide out to here. And then the fill-in pad goes back there. It is eight inches of foam. I have a fan if it gets hot. Then because there's no windows in this area, I do have a monitor system. I have cameras outside. I have all kinds of electronics here. I have the thermostat to the air conditioning unit, AC, DC, USB. There's, there's a lot going on there. And then I have my reading lights and 
overhead storage. This is all cedar lined. And then um, pretty important thing when you're back here, it's wired with a three-way switch, all these overhead lights. So I can control these lights from back here or up front. So when I go to bed, I can shut everything off from this side. I get comments on this because the lights are all symmetrical. I have one in the middle that doesn't work. This is actually the only parts of the original truck body. This works off of the chassis batteries and it's, there's a switch on the dash of the truck. So the reason I left it in and wired it up is if I ever lost the whole system, this little LED light would run off of the two cranking batteries for a week and it gets light to the sink through the glass door. So it'd be my emergency light basically. As far as building materials for the ceiling, I use cedar and I wanted to wrap it around the wall a little bit just for a nicer look. And then I have recessed lights behind it that I can adjust with the light level. This is the entrance to the bathroom. I went with a diffused glass because there's a, a boat hatch in there and I get some light through this. So that's the, the purpose for that. I have a unusual toilet. It's a Jabsco toilet right out of a boat, basically. This is the same toilet I had in my sailboat. And the reason I went with this instead of the composting or the regular um, RV toilets is it doesn't stink. Um, because it's like your ho house, when you flush it, it actually flushes with water and it holds water. So you never get the smell from the holding tank coming into it. The downside of it is it does use a little bit more water, but I carry plenty of water. That's not a problem. One of the goals of this build was to have a separate sleeping quarters, a seven foot separate couch area and a separate bathroom with a toilet. It was important to me to have a full size shower, especially in the winter time to take a wetsuit off. I hold enough water to where with the water, with the water heater that's in here, I can take a five minute shower, leaving the water on. I built this primarily for myself for the six month summers, but I also built it for my kids that come and camp with me. And my grandson, he can sleep on the floor. He, he, he loves it, it's all right. I have no plans of further modifications as I've been doing, which is six months of summer surfing and then six months in the desert, well, part-time. I, I I'm in here about half the year, maybe a little bit more than half the year. My plans are I'm not gonna build another one. I tell people if this gets lost tomorrow, I'm gonna buy a tent. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.